Hey everybody, it's Bob at I Like to Make Stuff, and we're here with another episode of Brain Pick. We got a lot of questions piling up, and I'm really excited to have uh, Steve Ramsey from Woodworking for Mere Mortals here tonight. Say hi, Steve. Hey, Bob, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for being on, man. Yeah, it's good to see you again. We, we Bob and I met each other at, at North in North Carolina at the Woodworking in America show, and it was a lot of fun. Got to meet like all of us at one place. And so. Yeah, that was it was really crazy to meet that many people that no, now I'm now I'm friends with, you know. <laughs> I know, it was overwhelming. I was I was shaking so many hands, you know. I was like, I'm sure I'm gonna come home sick from all of this. <laughs> <laughs> but did you come home sick? No. Oh that's <laughs> no, no, I but I do have I have sort of a germaphobe in a way. Not too bad. I'm not like Howie Mandel, but in a little bit. I, I so I, I wash my hands a lot. <laughs> So you spent the rest of that night uh, in North Carolina just scrubbing. Just your hands. Hands. <laughs> well, we got a lot of questions. I want to get going so that we don't run out of time because I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of them. Good. Um, and there was one that is, um, I think, I think it's really important, and I think we need to just take care of it right out of the gate. Um, it's from Colby. Steve, can you post the banana nut bread recipe you talked about in your last video? <laughs> well, actually, that banana recipe is online. It's over at, on Anna's channel, and because she's the one who has that recipe, but it's a really easy recipe. I've never made banana bread before, so <laughs> cool. Well, now we know. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for tonight. Thanks for. <laughs> okay. yeah. Thanks, everybody. Drive safely. Um, all right, we got one from Nick Ferry here. Did you ever imagine hey, that you'd, you'd achieve the amount of success that you have on YouTube, and did you ever uh, give thought to how many lives you've been a part of in the woodworking world? Uh, no and yes. It, the, the, the first part, I never expected what I'm doing to just balloon out into something so big. Uh, but on the second part, it, that's the most humbling part about what I do is when I hear from so many people who tell me, wow, you know, I got into woodworking or I started building things and just because of some of the videos I saw of yours. And it took me a while to kind of realize that, hey, I'm kind of like having an impact on people. And now it, and it, it's sort of a, it's a good feeling, but it, it makes me like uncomfortable in a little in a little sense. You know, it's like, well, I'm just a guy in a garage just to, making things. But that, that's kind of the case with everybody. I mean, in, no matter what you're doing, no matter what scale it is, no matter how many people see it, um, you know, probably whatever it is you're doing will have that effect on somebody. And right. that's pretty awesome, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's great. I mean, obviously the scale that you're reaching people is fantastic, um, but I think even people with small channels can probably still have, you know, an impact on somebody else's creativity, somebody else being motivated to try to do something, so. Yeah, it's, it's really not all about, it's not about how many people you reach, it's about, or it's more about the quality of impact you have on the people that you do reach, and really being able to produce quality content, and I think that's why people watch so many different woodworking shows on YouTube now, is because there's such variety. That's a good point. Uh, here's another one uh, for Steve. We've watched you build small crafts and also furniture pieces. If you take away YouTube and the website, just you and your shop, would you still build both crafts and furniture or go to one or the other? I would probably build a lot more um, complex projects. I would. My wife's been wanting me to build a sewing cabinet for a couple of years now. and um, It's just with the show, it's really hard for me to get in, more involved in those longer projects now. Hmm. I, do you think, is that holding you back, do you think? Well, I just don't have the time to do it, you know, because it doesn't, that's not really the format of my show. The format of my show is really uh, simple and quick projects, although I am surprised that a lot of times some of those bigger projects, I can present those in a short time period on, on video. And it's just a matter of being, having the time to actually build the project itself. I, I think coming up in this in the new year, one of my furniture projects is going to be a dining room table. I still think I can probably get that in under the eight minute mark on a video though. Yeah, I, I could see that with being, I mean it's a self-imposed limit kind of, but right. I could see that probably you know being frustrating over time, you know, wanting to be able to do something bigger and it just doesn't fit the format. Right. Um, here's one from Joel Crawford. No, hey Joel. Um, Steve, can you tell us how the whole H&G &H Home Garden 
channel came about with that crazy Red Wings fan. <laughs> uh, basically, I just wanted to start expanding the Four Mere Mortals network into other things, and I knew that, and it, it, I still have plans to even expand it more, but I knew that this isn't something I have the time to do myself, so I have to start bringing in other people to do it. And uh, I hope to be adding some gardening shows to that channel soon and other home and garden kind of stuff. Nothing specific you want to expand on? One of the things I've been wanting to do for a long time is coming up with uh, a separate Four Mere Mortals channel, which would be uh, more involved in digital fabrication and uh, laser cutting, 3D printing, CNC, those, those kind of things, because that market is really huge right now. It's, it doesn't fit into the woodworking for mere mortals format, but the four mere mortals pro format, which is basically kind of like the, the dummies books, except video versions, you know, it's they're simple versions of how to do these kind of projects. And so that's something I'd really like to get more involved in in the new year, but again, it's just a matter, of, it's a matter of finding the right people, bringing them together, and then just organizing it all, keeping all of that going, and still being able to run woodworking for Mere Mortals and produce a video every Friday. <laughs> yeah, we were talking uh, before we started put this live just about how much stuff Steve is doing all the time and how actually doing woodworking is a relatively small part of that <laughs> these days, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. That's the that's actually the best part, though. I, I love woodworking now more than ever because it gives me because it gives me a break from the rest of the business. Yeah. All right. Here's another one, actually, from Joel as well. Um, Steve, can you talk about your experience with Amex and other co-branding adventures you've been on as of late? How they came about, etc. Well, most of that is because they've been contacting me through various networks and uh, asking me if if I'm interested in these kind of projects, and it always it comes down to a matter of if it if it fits what I'm trying to do, and if I can work it into the show. And uh, you know, I hope that when I do these things, my goal is to be able to not just do an ad like the American Express. Basically, that's four weeks of ads, but to actually be able to provide honest value to people who are watching those videos and. I, I think I've been pretty successful at that. I get a few complaints, but for the most part, you know, it's actual projects people can make. That's, yeah, I think that's a that's a good way to it's a good way to focus on people and like really grab people in because if people are intimidated at the beginning, at the, when they first are introduced to what you're doing, they're not even going to come back. Uh, there's a guy here that says wanted to say thanks for making the woodworking something that even I can do, which is right on that same topic. You've added humor and took out the intimidation. Now my five-year-old daughter likes to woodwork with me. Thanks. Oh, good for her. What's your daughter's name? Does he have his daughter, her daughter's he name? He doesn't. He doesn't. Well, right. Maybe he can put it in the comments or send it to you or something. Okay. And, and speaking of that, my, I, for Christmas, I'm buying my oldest two kids, who are five and seven, uh, their first toolboxes. And so I got them toolboxes and some basic, basic, basic stuff. I don't know if this is something you have experience with with your son, but what do you think a five or seven year old kid needs to start with. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking consumables or safety equipment. That stuff's in my shop already. I'm talking right. like hammers, screwdrivers. What do you think they need? Um, I, I don't know if there's anything. And my son is not into woodworking. He was never really into woodworking. I would, when, about that age, I would get him into the shop and, and he just wasn't interested. But, you know, I think that, I think giving a kid a saw and telling him to saw is, a, is not really a, the best idea. <laughs> I think nothing will bore a kid more than sawing a board by hand. So my, my thought, I've addressed this in videos before, is that when I've done projects with kids for various reasons is to mostly have everything cut, everything done, and the kids are just getting kind of a quick taste of woodworking. They're maybe gluing things together, they're applying some clamps, and you're, you're getting them in and out of the shop in under 30 minutes. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I asked the same question on Facebook a couple days ago, and um, the responses I got were very helpful, but there were a whole lot of people that recommended 
saws, hand saws, or coping <laughs> saws. Or <laughs> because they started out that way. Damn it, yeah. I've used a saw, and that's I, I sawed a hundred boards. Yeah, and, and maybe that is. I, I cannot imagine my children with a saw. <laughs> no. That sounds like a like a horror movie ready to happen right there. But yeah. anyway, so I, I'm excited about finding, you know, just some stuff. Of course, they're going to be completely supervised. The right. toolboxes are going to be locked in my shop, you know, when they're not in use and stuff. But you know, I got my first toolbox when I was uh, maybe about 10 or 11. My grandpa gave me a toolbox and filled it with stuff. I still have the toolbox, actually. I don't know if I still have those same tools, but I think he had a, he had a handsaw and he had some like wrenches and kind of like home and home repair kind of tools you might need. Um, you know, I'm sure I still have some of those tools actually. What about a pocket knife? When did you get your I, first pocket knife? Yeah, I've I've had pocket knives from when I was real young, and we used to I used to you know whittle sticks, probably just pointy sticks. I don't remember whittling anything other than pointy sticks, but uh, that we. Uh, I always had a pocket knife. I never really knew what to do with a pocket knife, but I always carried one around, and I don't carry one around now. I never have a need to cut things. Well, that sounds kind of odd, being in a, a woodworking show. <laughs> well, I guess with a knife, I, I don't know. I, I mainly use mine. I mean, I carry one all the time, and I mainly use it to open boxes from Amazon. I think that's yeah. the main thing I do. Um, let's see. Here's another one. How much woodworking did you do before that first chessboard video? Oh, I did a lot of woodworking. Yeah. Um, a lot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> speaking this of much. chess, speaking of chess, we have to talk about the chess pieces. Is this an ongoing thing? Are they ever going to happen? Well, they're going to happen. They'll happen. <laughs> In 2015? Keep watching. Keep watching. Oh, that's that's how you're well, getting people to hang Can't make any promises, but they may happen in 2015, you know. Uh, if ever I had to say there was the biggest mistake I ever made in my in my show, it was on my very first video. <laughs> <laughs> At the very end of it, I said, well, obviously my next project has got to be to make chess pieces. And how many videos ago was that? I don't know, but it's I, it's like six, seven years later now. <laughs> oh gosh! Wow. Yeah, but I had a guy send me a chess set. That's our chess pieces, and oh man, they are so nice. And I, you know what? To talk about the chess pieces just a little bit. Let's get serious here, can we? Yes. I please. think that, <laughs> the problem with for me is that I, I have such little patience and. The thought of making, especially the pawns, there's 16 pawns, and they all have to be the same, and I think that's what's holding me back, because I, I, I have a kind of a short attention span, and I like everything to just I do a project and move on. I rarely make a project twice, and to make all those chess pieces just, I don't know, someday, I'll, I'll do it. I think you could, I mean, you know, obviously you do what you want, but I think you could probably stylize them in a way that would make it more interesting to do, but still get the same idea across. Rather than them, right. them being identical, you know, they could have a common yeah. trait or something, yeah. the height yeah. or something. So, so now we can expect that in January. I think we got that worked out. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, here's one from Sterling. Uh, Steve, do you ever want to just put the camera down and build something just for fun, and what would your dream project build be? No, I can't put the camera down. It's just always attached to me. <laughs> No. Um, no, yeah, sometimes I would like to just build some projects without shooting video of it. Uh, what would my dream project be? Uh, I don't have a dream project. I, earlier this year I would have said a TARDIS, but I made the TARDIS. <laughs> so you're done. Yeah. But I think Millennium Falcon might be the next thing. Then you might. Yeah, just... I don't. I don't really plan anything ahead, you know. So I'm not really sure. Other than I mentioned, I, I need to make a dining room table, but that's that's about it. Hmm. I didn't know what I was going to make this week's project until today, because I, I was doing the American Express thing, and that was so much work trying to get all that together. This is what I'm making. Hmm. They're New Year's noisemakers. Every year I make a New Year's noisemaker. So this will be my final video of the year. So I'm making a couple different couple different kinds. Nice. Awesome. Uh, here's one from Lynn over at Darwin Over. 
Um, hey guys, Bob, since you've done some Arduino stuff, any plans to incorporate more of that? And Steve, do you have any experience with software or electronics? Um, I'll give you a break from talking for a minute and I'll answer my okay. part. Um, yes, I do plan on doing some more Arduino stuff. Um, I don't have anything specific planned, but it's something I'm really interested in. That, that and Raspberry Pi, um, I have a lot of really loose ideas for both of those platforms that I want to start to pursue. Um, but my biggest problem is I have, you know, 100% more ideas than I have time. So it's just really hard for me to, to nail those down into a schedule. Um, and people already are a little aggravated with how, how long it takes me to get a video out. So, you know, I, that's just my situation at the moment. So what about you, Steve? Do you have any experience with software or electronics? Um, a little bit of electronics, but it's funny you mentioned that because my son right now, he's taking a class in product design and they're learning Arduino and programming in, in that and he's, I think he's just downloaded it onto my computer and I want to get more into that too, which is kind of what I was mentioning in this, this other uh, Fort Mere Mortals channel somewhere down the pipe may be involved in some of that. Yeah, it's, um, that's one of those things that I think, I mean, I like woodworking, um, can be really intimidating to people uh, at a distance, but then, especially the Arduino stuff, when people see an example project and they see like, physically the components that you need to make an LED blink or something, it's unbelievably simple, and right. people are really blown away at how much they can accomplish with no foreknowledge, but then you don't even really have to learn a whole lot to do that stuff. Um, it's pretty cool. I, I hope more people... Uh, experiment there and you know find that they find it's not as hard as they think it's going to be um, let's see here oh Steve can you and Nick Offerman do a comedic woodworking video together you live pretty close to one another and you're both funny <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Nick so yeah I would sure okay <laughs> have to see if we can get you and Nick uh, Hooked up. I don't know if he's that close. He's in, I think he's in L.A. probably. That's like a six-hour drive. Uh, let's see. A lot. There's a, the thing keeps jumping around, so I apologize for the dead space here. Um, Steve, spank your alfalfa. Oh, neither one. Yeah. Mickey Daniels. <laughs> so I'll throw in an obscure one. <laughs> gotcha. All right, here's another one. Who will win in a car race, Bob or Steve? Probably Bob, because I, I have a 1976 pickup truck. I think if I had the opportunity to have your truck, I probably would, but I don't. So I think my car would probably outrun your probably. truck. Probably. Although, I mean, that doesn't mean... You could be a crazy driver in a truck, for all we know. So, <laughs> um, Let's see here. Hey, Steve, big fan of you. Uh, since you're so busy and have so many ideas for channels and projects, have you ever thought about having a helper or apprentice? Yes, I would like to do that. I'm thinking about that. Do you think that would be an on-camera person? Um, not for woodworking for mere mortals, maybe for the other shows, definitely. The other shows will definitely feature other talent, not, not me. Right. I mean, I know a few people that have, have someone that work in their, for, in their shop, you know, uh, obviously, there's mm -hmm. like assistants and stuff, but then other people that actually right. help them execute things within the shop, but they're not really on camera. Um, yeah, no, I, I I don't see the, the appeal of having somebody else working at what I do because really most of the time it's just kind of boring in my shop. You know, I'm just trying to figure out what's the next shot's going to be and then shoot it. And the projects are simple enough that I don't really need help with them. Right. Um, here's a good one. Did you start making videos because you loved woodworking so much, or did you have an interest in both woodworking and videography? Yeah, probably both. Uh, the only thing I wanted to do was just to make a record of, of a chessboard that I was making, and I just thought it would be fun to just document the whole process. I never knew anybody would watch it. So what was the, what was the step after that? So you made that video, you put it online, it got some views. How right. did you, what was the next thing? Well, then I started posting family videos, and I, I posted a whole series of roller coaster videos. <laughs> I didn't know what my channel was. It was just 
a channel, you know, it was kind of the early days of YouTube, and so now everybody starts a channel knowing exactly what they want to do with the channel, and it was just a fun channel. I put, like, our, uh, I made, like, a, a Christmas video to send to the family, you know, and that sort of thing was, was on that channel, and half of my videos were roller coaster point of view videos, because my son and I were involved in the American Coaster Enthusiast, and we would go all over riding roller coasters, every roller coaster in California and everywhere, and Post those online, but then it was at one point that I was getting more and more people watching the woodworking videos that I was doing and commenting on those, and so that's when I, I thought, well, that's probably what I should focus on. And I, I left all those roller coaster videos on my channel, believe it or not, until just like last year, the year before. I had a whole bunch of roller coaster videos on there. I finally deleted them all. I think there's one still on there that I, I really liked. It was it, the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk has a great coaster and. I don't know why I left that one on. <laughs> but if you look through some of my really older videos, there's some really obscure things in there. Then that one summer also, I spent the entire summer rebuilding my deck. And uh, I also deleted all of that because I figured it really wasn't also, again, it's not really in the format of woodworking for mere mortals. But that was a long, probably every single weekend I would be out there working on that. And so it was kind of like a vlog, a building vlog or something. So what was the... What was the catalyst? I mean, I've heard your story, and maybe, I don't know if you've told this publicly, but I've heard your story of, like, moving from your graphic design job into mm -hmm. this. But what was the actual, like, catalyst for wanting to make that jump? Um, or was it a spread out? Yeah, it kind of, it was because I've worked from home for so long, so it was either working in here or working up in my office and so when I wasn't doing graphic design work I could easily come down here and, and putter around in the shop which is what I've been doing for years anyway and then it just became a point where I was earning more income doing woodworking videos than I was making brochures <laughs> so I, I, it was a balance at that one point I had to figure okay if I really want to make this a go I can't be spending time dealing with clients who need trade show exhibits and, and those sort of things. So I had to just make that jump. It wasn't too hard of a jump, really, because it was more of a transition. All right. <clears throat> Here's one. Uh, well, it just jumped around again. Um, and I'll take this one. Nobody wants to see my ugly mug. <laughs> Do you think anyone would be interested in a YouTube video with narration only? That's from Mark. Mark, I, I think so. I think... Um, I've said this before to other people. I think no matter how you want to go about making a video, um, and no, no matter what it's about, no matter your technique, I think there will be uh, an audience. You will find an audience. It may take a little while, and you may have trouble you know, initially getting people to watch it, but I think there's an audience out there for just about everything. So if, you know, if that's the way that you can make a video, something that you care about and you can do a good job at, I think you should do that. So... Don't don't let uh, and you're probably not as ugly as you think, also. So, um, let's see here. Steve, do you have any plans to learn any new techniques like dovetail joinery, mortise and tenon joinery, or maybe wood carving with chisels, not CNC? Uh, out of all of those wood carving, I would like to do. I've never tried any serious wood carving. I've done some little bits of wood carving. Um, dovetails and all those joints. I've done all those joints before, but for the show, that's not, again, it's not really within the format of the show. I did have a dovetail jig for my router, and that was that's the worst purchase I ever <laughs> made. I think I used it like three times, and it was, I, I always forgot how to do it. I, every time I had to go through this learning curve of how to read the manual, and you have to test it, and if you're going to make dovetail joints, I think it's just going to be, it's one of those things that's probably way faster and easier just to learn how to do it by hand. Yeah, I, I've talked to a few people who have used those jigs, and it sounds like they're just a nightmare. I've never done a dovetail. Yeah. I have no reason to, but they don't sound fun. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, a dovetail is really just, uh, mostly it's just an exercise for the woodworker himself, because there's plenty of other ways to make joints that are just as strong, and so it's just, you know, it's, it's really about the woodworking then rather than the project itself. Right. Well, since carving is, you know, one of the things you want to do, I think um, chess pieces would be a good thing to carve. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Sorry, I, people are asking me. I have to keep pushing on it. Uh, there's somebody on here that wants me to, to try to get you to commit to a date. So a, a, date, of, a date of chess pieces, not a date like dinner. Oh, I thought he wanted to go out on a date. <laughs> Call me later. So, Steve, I found your videos when I did a Google search for woodworking, and I watched every one of your videos, and the thing jumped around again, uh, and fell in love with woodworking. Now, my four-year-old granddaughter, Aaliyah, loves to spend time with me in the shop. Thanks for everything you do. Ah, uh, you're welcome. I love hearing stories like that, really. Yeah, that stuff's pretty awesome. Uh, for both, did you ever try to do a project that would be more than one week, and would there be a way to make it appealing to viewers? I know you have an opinion about this, Steve. Multi-part well, projects? Right. I, it's just I've done multi-part. My chessboard was seven long, boring parts. Pe some people like that. Um, but I, I do this for a living, and so I really have to look at the numbers. And for me, for most people, if you post long, multi-part series of videos, you you won't get the numbers of viewers that you really need to make it a business. If you're doing a, a, making videos just for the sheer fun of making videos, go for it. You know, I think that's a, a great thing to do. It kind of makes sense. I mean, that's that was my attitude when I did the chessboard. All I want to do is just document what I'm doing. I don't know why, but I just want to document it all. And you know. Hmm. So, no, I, I probably won't be making multi-part series for this show. Gotcha. You could have uh, multi-part videos for mere mortals. It could be like a, one of your other channels. Unless um, if each part was like 60 seconds long, maybe. Okay. Would... <laughs> there you go. Um, Mark, being a lefty, what's the, what's the major challenge you found with tools made for right-handed people? Are you left-handed? No. Oh. I'm not sure who that question's for. Maybe it's for me. I'm left-handed. Um, I have not found any... I don't even notice that tools are made for right-handed people, if they are. I'm not really sure. Uh, Steve, you've definitely tapped into something that begs for an audience on a national level. Do you think eventually you'll make your own coffin out of pallet wood? My, my own coffin out of pallet wood? <laughs> well, maybe. Sure, why not? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think he, he does, it's a joke, but um, you definitely have tapped into something that, that has grown to a really big level. Um, is there another platform? I don't want to say TV because I don't know if that's of interest, but is there no. another another non-YouTube thing that you could see what you're doing? Well, I, I, just, I keep my eyes open for anything that might come up, certainly. Um, right now, I'm able to, when he mentioned having a national audience, well, I have an international audience now, and I can reach people all over the world, which is something you really can't do that easily on television. So I I don't know. I, I like doing what I do. I like to just come into my shop in the morning with a cup of coffee, and nobody else is around, and just shoot. Yeah, I think... Uh having that freedom to be able to do whatever you want, whenever you want. I mean, I mean, it's it's like, you know, running your own business of any kind, there's the drawback, there's the hassle and the the risk involved with it, but at the same time, you're totally in control and you can take it any way that you want it. And mm -hmm. I think that's uh, that's worth a lot more than the risk. Right, right. And I, I, I also should say that I, I'm totally in control, but that's all tempered by audience expectations. So, you know, it's one thing to just say, well, I'm going to just do whatever I want, <laughs> but it, it doesn't fit with the format, and if it's not going to be something that, that people are going to watch and people are going to want to build themselves, then I, I won't do it. So there is constraints within that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so this one's for both of us. What's the worst project you have ever made? <laughs> wow. I, the, the, probably there's two that come to mind. One of them was a few years ago. I made this little flippy toy, and I just couldn't get it to work. And I posted the video, and, and I asked people to fix it for me, and they did, and I never revisited that. And the second one was last year. Around the same time, I made a xylophone, this little toy xylophone, which was... It was a nightmare. It was it was last year's nightmare project. It was a xylophone. I could not. It was 
hard to get it tuned. It was hard to get the key, figure out how to put the keys on correctly. And so, yeah, those would be two that come to mind. I think for me, uh, luckily I didn't make a video of it. It was before I was making videos. But I've done built-in cabinetry before in our living room, this huge built-in thing. And uh, in our downstairs, we had a fireplace, and there was a, some nasty old cabinets on both sides that were built in. And I tore them out, and I went to build these new cabinets in, and I measured everything and built these. I mean, these things were, you know, four feet across, six feet tall, and got them up there to push them in and didn't account for the variation in the brick that was going up the sides. And so... I ended up with these huge boxes that were all glued and nailed together and everything, <laughs> and they were, you know, about an eighth of an inch too wide in both directions and too tall, and it was it was a nightmare. And I ended up having to take these things apart, both of them, redo them, put them back in, and then fill the gaps. And it was, ugh. it would have been I, I always been find horrible it, if I had made a video. Of that. <laughs> I always find it's a it's a whole different mindset when I'm building things for the house. I built a mantle for our fireplace and things like that that it's a totally different mindset from woodworking because woodworking, you know, even though I, I don't get that precise and accurate, houses are no, nowhere near accurate. Walls are never square and the floors are off. And so you really have to think about things differently when you build, you know, built-ins for the house. Yeah. It, speaking of that, this, um, um, my wife's stepfather was a contractor, and he told me one time, and it was something I'd never forgotten because it, it applies to so much stuff, but building a house or building pretty much any construction-grade project is really just a matter of covering up the previous step. And I'd never really thought of it that way because you think about a house being very finished and very final, but, you know, it's yeah. framing covered up by drywall, which is covered up by mud, and the seams are covered up by trim, which is covered up by caulk, which is covered up by paint. You know, <laughs> it just keeps going down, and they hide You're mistakes right. and hide mistakes, hide mistakes. And so I've tried to keep that in mind as I build things. Um, you know, obviously I'm not like a fine woodworker. I don't do like fine furniture or anything. But as long as I can, as as there's another step past what I'm currently working on, you know, that I can I can use to cover my mistakes, then I'm I'm all right. <laughs> so. Let's um, see. Guys, do you have any suggestions on losing the fear of a table saw? My only suggestion for that would be not to lose your fear of your table saw. I think um, it's it's super easy for people who use, especially that, but any kind of tool to just get so comfortable and just forget how dangerous they really are. So that would be my suggestion is maintain a healthy fear of pretty much everything you're doing so that you're on your toes when you're in the shop. Yeah, it's probably fear isn't the right word. Probably just more just respect those tools. I don't know if, if you're really scared, you probably shouldn't be using it. But uh, that's a good point. Probably uh, the the main thing with table saws, and I think you hear about table saw injuries. That I think most table saw injuries are due to kickback. I think lost fingers are a lot rarer than most of us think that they are. Um, but kickback that happens, it can happen really easily. I think the main thing about table saws, really, really any tool, the main rule to think about is where are your hands going to be and where is your body going to be positioned before each cut. And if you really take the time to pre-plan how you're going to move, you'll probably feel a lot more confident. That's an excellent, excellent response. Um, I can never seem to eloquently describe the difference between woodworking and carpentry. Can you guys take a shot? Don't have a clue. I don't know. I, I, I remember Norm Abram, he was, they always called him a master carpenter. Remember? On the show, yeah. master carpenter. And I always thought a carpenter was somebody who built houses, you know? I, but I don't know. Yeah, that's, I, I guess in my mind I'd always think, thought of carpentry as structural of some sort, you right. know, whether it's like a pergola or a whatever, a house, but... I guess that would be the only thing I could think of between the two, but they're probably pretty interchangeable, I would imagine. When I did that, I did the uh, show with Kerry Byron, the, the American Express deal we did, and it was all scripted, and they, they said, uh, they had me listed on there as, she introduced me as Steve Ramsey, Master Carpenter, and I said, I, I don't feel comfortable with that at all. Let's let's not do that. So they, they changed that. It was the only change they, they made, but I, I don't think I'm a master of anything. 
You could have come up with something really creative to replace it with, though. <laughs> I think they ended up calling me YouTube Woodworker. So, okay. <laughs> That's accurate. There you go. Um, here's another one from Sterling. Uh, will there be another Mega Mimo meetup in Kansas Mega City at WI or another venue? A lot of talk wanting another one. It was a lot of fun. That was. Yeah, I really want to do that again. And I think that I've been giving that some thought about woodworking in America, and I, I think I'll probably do it this year. Um, you know, it's in the middle of the country. I'm sure that's why they, they had it there, so people can come from all directions. Um, but, yeah, I'll do another make a Mimo meetup. Hopefully we can get even more people this time. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and it was a lot of people. You have to get uh, a much bigger space. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, here's one from Jimmy Duresta. Steve, what are your favorite channels? We'll put you on the spot with that one. I would say Bob Claggett's channel and Jimmy Duresta's channel. Yes. Score. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you have any? What are some? Seriously, though, what are some non woodworking channels? Just oh my god, I have tons. I really like Veritasium a lot. I like SciShow. I like. Uh, uh, Michael Stevens, Vsauce, all three Vsauce shows are great. I think there's excellent content all over YouTube, and I spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos. We we have a, you know, a Chromecast. If you don't have a Chromecast, wow, get a Chromecast. Those things are great. And you just write to your TV from your phone, you know, you can watch YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I, I've found lately that there's so much more that I would like to watch than I actually have time to. Like the time mm -hmm. that I am in front of the computer, I end up I'm working on something, and you know, I just right. every morning I'll look at my subscription list, and I'll just put everything in add and watch later that I want to watch, and now I've got this ridiculously long watch later video. Right, yeah. and I do. I watch almost every. I try to subscribe to every woodworking uh, channel that there is, and as those come through my feed, there's. You're right. There's times when it can be daunting, but it's not too hard to manage those, and. Um, yeah, and so I, I watch those. I'll admit, if they're longer, I can I, I can scrub through them pretty quickly. But I do try to watch as much as I can. Gotcha. Um, let's see. I was listening instead of looking for the next question, so my apologies. Uh, how old were you guys when you first started creating? I guess that means I don't know if that's videos or just creating stuff. Let's just take creating stuff. How old were you when you started creating? Not wood. Oh, I, my whole life, <clears throat> really, you know. I, I think a lot of us are just kind of, you're born just wanting to do things. And I, I just remember as a really little kid building things out of paper and, you know, whatever. I, I, you know what I remember making is uh, I made, like, laser guns out of out of tree branches. You know, they, they looked horrible, but they were laser guns, and I would wrap wire around them. And, yeah. Yeah, your imagination make them, made them look good. I, I, it's kind of the same way as a kid. I mean, my grandfather and my father both had uh, wood shops, and I was always in there, you know, playing with scraps, and so I've just always stuck things together. And then, you know, Legos were a huge part of... Uh, they were the fill-in toy. Like, I played with Legos a whole lot, but they were also the fill-in toy for other toys when I didn't have something. So I'm playing Star Wars. I don't have whatever ship. I make it out of Legos, you know, and that becomes the thing. So it was a... It's a really good fill-in toy to, and it's a fantastic toy in general. But um, let's see here. The new Lego movie. Oh yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, great. That's, that's really fun. And Did I have see? I have kids, so I get to watch it as many times as right. I want. I feel bad about it. <laughs> so my kid's seventeen, and we still saw it like three times. We love it. Oh, three is nothing. I got you beat by like twenty or so. <laughs> <laughs> um. Bob and Steve, what is your favorite video of your own and favorite videos of other producers? Let's take the first part of that. What's the what's the most satisfying video that you've made? Oh, wow, I you know I, I really don't know. I, I can't think of them. I I just I every video I make is you know I, I try to add something special to that video. And you know, I, I always like the videos, but I wouldn't release them when I when I publish them. And then I just I sort of forget about them. You know, they just kind of go down the list. Um, I think you know one of the projects that I it was really fun was a marshmallow crossbow that I made. And that man, a lot of people have made that. And it was just a project that 
had a lot going for it, and it worked really, really well, and it was just cool, and it was fun. And so I, that comes to mind. Yeah. I think for me, I think my favorite um, is probably my Arduino-controlled dust collection system, just because oh, yeah. it crossed all of my interests in... Mm -hmm. You know, and it's something that I use every single time I'm in the shop. You know, a lot of the things, are furniture or whatever, I, I use it every once in a while. But that's something that every time I turn the tool on, I use that thing, and I get reminded, like, oh, I did this cool thing. And then if somebody's over here and I get to show it to them, you know, they're like, oh, that's a really good idea. You know, but so it's nice for that reason, just because I get to use it, I think, more than anything else. Um, let's see. Uh, any advice for a 15-year-old woodworker like myself? Maybe a particular skill I should learn or something I sh should spend time on. I, I don't know. Just start making things. You know, I, I think a lot of woodworking is just trial and error. Just, um, you know, cut some boards, try to put them together, and figure it out. I think that's... Really, that's the appeal of woodworking, is that it's always new. I mean, every project I make has its own set of challenges and, and thinking that goes into it. And so uh, woodworking is something that is so simple to get the basics and to understand how it all works, but you'll never master it because there's, it's always challenging, too. I think that's what's interesting about it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There, there's a lot of questions here about tools, and a lot of people are asking, you know, what, what if I'm getting, if I'm buying my first tool or my first things, or I don't have a lot of money, or I'm just getting started. Yeah. Um, I think that kind of falls into the same, the same topic in that there's no right or wrong answer for what tool you should start with or what you need in your shop to really get started. Yeah, and one thing, hey, there's, Mat hey, there's Matthias Wando. Hi, Matthias. <laughs> um, I saw him on the list. Oh, cool. um, one thing is I'm not a tool guy at all, and, and I try to make it clear that I, I'm not really, there's guys who just really, really like tools, and I, I really, when I think about my tools, I'm not even really sure what brands they are or what, you know, it's just, I, I use them, and I, I don't even I don't even treat my tools well. I'm really bad about it, and they. But I think it's just a matter of if you have a, a, a component of tools, just just keep using them, you know, and just just make things with them. That's my opinion. That's all it is. I don't know. Some people just really want me to give tool recommendations, but I, I just don't have any. Yeah, and I, I think you know you're gonna use what you have, no matter what grade it is, or. or even what specific tool is, you're going to use what you have and then there may come a point where you outgrow it and you need to get something better or different or whatever, but you won't know that until you use it. So starting out with the best tool doesn't mean that you're going to have the best tool for you and what you're making and things like that. Um, let's see. <laughs> Every time I work in my carport, I keep on saying, it's a garage. That's how bad I like your show. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's here's another one. Uh, Bob, how much money did you put into your main video console? I so love that project, and I'm really enjoying your combination of woodworking and electronics. Um, thanks, Phil. I I don't really know exactly how much money I put into it, but I would say under a hundred dollars. Not very much. Um, the components there are really inexpensive, and now, granted, so far I've not built the cabinet. I'm going to build like a full arcade cabinet one of these days, and that will probably be quite a bit more expensive than the rest of it. But you can pick up a Raspberry Pi and some buttons for probably a total of $50, $60, and that would get you everything you needed to to get rolling. So I, w I would love to see more people do thing, projects like that um, that don't take any specific knowledge of something, but you but you end up with like this really awesome thing in your house that everybody that comes over to your house will be amazed at. Because I know once I have a full-size arcade machine in my living room, my friends are going to really like it, and they're really going to want to play with it. So, um, Let's see here. Steve, should I expect bad results for applying shellac over wipe-on teak oil finish? I don't know. <laughs> I was hoping you knew, because I have no idea. 
I don't know. Hey, there's I, also I, I see Steve Carmichael online. I, I see these names coming up here. It's like, well, I know them. I know them. And I also want to say somebody who asked what channels I like to watch, Steve Carmichael. I like to watch his videos a lot. Um, he, he's one of these woodworkers that whenever that his video comes through my feed, I always watch it and it's entertaining from start to finish so yeah there's there's one and he's right below Matthias Wachtel those are two channels I watch all the time and I'm really glad you mentioned that actually because the next guest on Brain Pick is going to be Steve Carmichael yes <laughs> so uh, January 6th everybody at the same time 9.30 uh, Eastern uh, yeah we're going to have Steve Carmichael oh on. cool I, I really like his videos I, I love to see how the direction he takes those and uh, it's they're different yeah He's got some good stuff, and he's a super nice guy. Got to hang out with him at, at yeah. WIA, too. I, I, I got to eat pizza with him and Iggy, Iggy, <laughs> Izzy Swan. We ate pizza together. Yes. We had a lot of people there at that pizza place. That was interesting. Uh, let's see. Both, you're the reason I st started this hobby. I need something that took me away from working all the time, and it was productive. Thank you for keeping me sane. Sure thing, Colby. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> okay, this this will reach into your uh, graphic design knowledge. Is there a way to remove burn marks from wood other than Photoshop? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of sanding. That's about all I do. I get burn marks on certain types of wood, just burn a lot. I, I cannot cut a piece of maple without getting burn marks. And walnut seems to burn easily, too. You can't see it as much on walnut, though. No, no. Right. I just sand. Lots of sanding. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, I don't know if I have a bad technique or something, but I seem to get burn marks on just about everything, especially with the router. I cannot use a router without <laughs> just blackening the sides of the wood. Yeah. Maybe dull bits or something. Probably. That, it's my problem is all my tools are just like perpetually dull. I'm really bad about sharpening things. Let's see here. We've got about 15 more minutes. I don't want to keep Steve on uh, too long. So if you have any, there's a bunch of questions here, but if you have any that you want him to answer, go ahead and get them in so people can upvote them and we can make sure you know there's enough time. Um, and I'm just trying to get through them all. Here's one. Okay, can we talk about the reasoning behind the recent change to Steve's videos with the corporate sponsors? And additionally, if he plans on getting back to larger woodworking projects, from the recent smaller ones. You kind of already answered that second part, but do you have any have anything you want to say about the I don't know if it's a recent change, but no, I don't it's that's how I earn my income, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think there's there might be an expectation from people that watch videos um, that somehow money just shows up when mm -hmm. when people create videos and I know that I've done some. Well, you know, I see it as there's there's three different ways. If you want to make a living making woodworking videos, is you can either uh, approach sponsors to try to get sponsorships, keep your videos free that way, or you can you have something to offer for sale. Like if you make really kick-ass plans, you can sell those and make a lot of money doing that, or you create paid content. You have you put up a, a paywall and uh, require a subscription to access your content. So that's just, for me, I just, I think it's important to, for what I do. I want to reach as many people as possible, and keeping it free is the best way to do that. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I, yeah, that's, that's a touchy subject for people that create videos, I think, because, you know, you definitely, oh, yeah, I think yeah. most of us at least have our audience's best interest in mind all the time, you know, mm -hmm. at the same time. You have to be able to pay for your what you're doing. You know, you have to cover your cost. And when it, every video I make, I ask myself the question: Does this video provide value to somebody, and will it provide some inspiration to somebody? And it may only be, even if it's just a two-minute video, like the one I posted today, two or three minutes. As long as there's one bit of information in there that somebody can take out of that and say, you know. Maybe this is something I might try. Maybe I'm not going to make a, a rustic wine bottle gift box, but maybe I can use that technique on something else I'm going to do. And so that, to me, that I'm providing value. And if somebody is taking that information and it 
inspires them to build something else, then, well, of course, I'm providing inspiration. Hmm. That's a that's a really good thing, way to think about it. Um, here's another one from Joel. I was thinking about making a nice desk out of some hard-to-find and expensive burled maple. My question has to do with the joinery technique. Should I paint it purple before or after I put it together? Because <laughs> <laughs> I paint everything purple. How did that start? I painted a, a, my bench, and it's in my front yard. I love that bench. It looks great out there, the purple uh, bench. Um, <laughs> but... I don't know. Somehow it, it became kind of a thing, but I don't. I don't mind it. It's funny. I like purple. I like colors. I like painting things. And you talk about you talk about your touchy woodworking subject. <laughs> painting. There's a there's a part of me that just kind of feels like I'm just pulling the chain of some people whenever I paint something. But usually I paint projects for a reason. You know, there there's certain like the. A, a candy dispenser to me just needs to be colorful and fun, you know, and especially projects for kids and toys. I don't think little toddlers are really interested in the intricacies of shades of wood species, really. You know, they just want bright colors. Yeah, I totally agree with you, especially the kids' stuff. I mean, there's also a durability, you know, that you're mm -hmm. kind of adding with the paint and anything yeah. with kids, man, it needs it. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what was really funny is there was one time when recently I had a uh, a project I made out of zebra wood and I posted something on Instagram, <laughs> a picture of it, and I said, well, now I'm going to get ready to paint it. And obviously that was a joke. I, I mean, you know, an exotic species of wood I'm not going to paint over. I would, why would I waste the money? I would buy pine or something. But wow, people took that real seriously. They, they thought I was going to paint zebra wood. <laughs> <laughs> you should have painted it and with black and white paint in a zebra <laughs> pattern. That would have been amazing. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to get through these. They're bouncing around a lot, which means there's a lot of questions being added or um, upvoted. I can't well, if I, could just, if I could just take just a moment to kind of expand on that. It, it, let's get serious again. About, about painting wood and it really is for those of you who may be new to my channel the whole idea the whole concept behind woodworking for mere mortals is that I really kind of just I want to expand what woodworking is because I think that for a long time woodworking has been just a narrow focus of what is acceptable and what's not acceptable and I think that if you want to make something and nail it together, it's woodworking. If you want to use dovetail joints, it's, of course, woodworking. And if you want to paint a project, it's also woodworking. So all I'm doing is just opening it up to more and more people. Yeah, I think that, is that kind of the, I mean, obviously, your For Mere Mortals in general is, mm -hmm. is aimed at that same idea. Right. So is is that the real motivation for doing like the home and garden stuff is just to reach people in different ways in that same Yeah, exactly. Same because I think in a lot of ways, a lot of information YouTube gave it gave us all a great opportunity to start presenting things in a different way. And it's always funny when you see TV shows try to bring it on to YouTube and they never quite get it right because all they're doing is taking the same format, that same set of rules and then just bring it down to a short, shorter <laughs> format and it really kind of leaving out that YouTube is more of a two-way street, it's not just one-way information. Um, let's see here, questions I think are slowing down as we get close to the end here. Um, here's a good one from David, Drunken Woodworker. Hey, David. Um, where does inspiration and motivation come from? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's a real answer to that, really. I think it's just, uh, for me, I, I get inspiration and motivation just because of deadlines. You know, I want to get things done. And so just like this whole American Express thing has really forced me, it was a lot of work, but it really forced me to really come up with some sort of creative ways to do creative, to come up with creative ideas in a really short period of time. And it's just because of that time constraint. If, if I didn't have that time constraint, I probably wouldn't have come up with the same ideas. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I think 
it all depends on where you are, where those things come from. You know, if you're if you're in a place where you're you're held down by like a job that you hate or you know some circumstance that's like forcing you down, then your inspiration is to get out of that thing. If you're in a place where you're surrounded by stuff that you love and yeah. everything is fantastic, then you're inspired by the stuff around you. I mean, I think a lot yeah. of it has to do with your situation and whether you want to you want to dive deeper into that situation or if you want to get out of that situation or you know how you want to affect the people around you or. Yeah, and don't don't ever use the excuse that you're not a creative person because sometimes you hear people say that, well, I'm just not a very creative person, which is everybody is creative, and all it is is it's just a matter. I think people who say that oftentimes it's just kind of a way of letting themselves off the hook, mm. not really unleashing their their full potential. And we're all creative. It's just a kind of a matter of just tapping into it. Yeah. Speaking of of creative stuff, there's another one here. Um, do you have any other creative interest other than woodworking? I know you were a graphic designer for a while. Mm -hmm. Do you have any anything else that you do creative stuff outside of this? Uh, nope. That's it. <laughs> I don't know. I you know, I, I, I like to garden. There's a certain amount of creativity to that, I suppose. Um, I I like <clears throat> I like a lot of trivia and that sort of thing, reading on movies and TV and kind of pop culture stuff a lot. Of music, I like music a lot. What are you listening to right now? Or, you know, these days? Uh, I like, mostly I listen to a lot of, uh, you know, modern alternative rock and EDM. I really like EDM a lot because it's a lot different. Um, variety. I really like Lord right now. Really, totally into Lord's music. Nice. That's interesting that you said EDM because I'm kind of the same way. I think a lot of people have this, well, at least for me, they have this expectation that I like. I like a lot of different types of music, but I think people are surprised when they mm -hmm. hear me listening to dubstep or dubstep. you know electronic <laughs> stuff. I I love that stuff. I mean, yeah, I, I do too. It's energetic and it's fun and and I. It, it's great listening to in the shop. Yeah, it's it. For me, it's it's good motivating background noise. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't like it doesn't keep my attention, but it doesn't bore me either. It's you know keeps keeps things moving. Um, well, let's see. Do we only got about three minutes left? Do you have anything coming up? You know, in this next year that you want to you want to tell people about anything you're excited about that you really want to? Yeah, mostly right now. For any of you who don't know, you probably already know that my new website is online. It's if you just go to fourmeremortals.net, you'll get to home, home and garden for mere mortals and woodworking for mere mortals, both those sites. But the main thing that I wanted to do with woodworking for mere mortals is really put the four back into woodworking for mere mortals and let all of you be able to post your own pictures. And so far, it's great seeing all of the projects and pictures people are posting on there and look for that to expand also in being able to post your own uh, how-to projects and plans too. Awesome. That's good. I'm glad to hear that it's it's taken off and has had a lot of interactivity from people. That's great. Yeah, it's a blast. Do you have any other Speci I mean, and other than what you just said, do you have like specific long-term growth uh, plans for you know what you want it to become that it's not already now that you want to tell anybody about, or is it? Well, I think that the the direction that you see for Mere Mortals Network going is the direction that I'm taking it. It's taking that that whole core idea of bringing, uh, building and creating, making of things and making it for Mere Mortals, making it for people who are either casually interested in it or are new to these topics and just presenting it in a fun short format format. Yes, a format format. <laughs> awesome. Well, it is 1030 and uh, we're going to let Steve go. Steve, thank you so much for doing this. I You're appreciate welcome. it. I know everybody else has appreciate it and uh, thanks for your time and keep doing what you're doing because you are motivating a whole bunch of people like me. Oh, thanks. We thanks. We're doing so. Thanks, Bob. Cool. Th thanks for having me on this show. This is a this is a great uh, a great show you're doing here, and it's a this was this is an example of one of those ideas that just works. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Um, so for the next episode, Steve Carmichael is January sixth, 
And so you guys all be sure to come back for that. And uh, the podcast that I'm doing with Jimmy Duresta and David Picciuto called Making It, we're going to have a new episode out this Friday. So keep an eye out for that. We're having a lot of fun doing that. Um, so thanks again, Steve. Thank you, everybody, for watching and for the questions and for everything. You guys are awesome. Have a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time.